Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about getting your driver's license after the pandemic is over and people are no longer in lockdown. How is that going to work? How are authorities going to handle the backlog of drivers who should be taking driver's tests? Uh, we're going to give you some answers to that today and talk to you uh, about two possible solutions of how uh, authorities, testing centers, are going to get caught up and take care of the backlog. Stick around, we'll be right back with that information. So if you're tuning in here, let us know where you're tuning in from in the world, what class of license you're going for if you're a new driver. And a couple of people here already, Samantha Rose is here. She asked me a question about whether she should be taking uh, driving lessons with a driving instructor. Probably not taking driving lessons with a driving instructor right now. Uh, you're not going to be able to take uh, driving lessons with a driving instructor due to social distancing. Uh, driving instructors have not, have not yet gone back to work uh, because of the lockdown still in place. Uh, Sheldon asked me if you can buy somebody who passed away, buy the vehicle from them. Uh, you, you cannot buy the vehicle from them right away. The way that it works when somebody passes away, uh, their estate, which the vehicle is part of the estate, the things that they owned is the estate. The uh, estate goes to a, um, what's, what it's called, power of attorney. Uh, somebody who takes over the estate and they are responsible for uh, what's it calling dissolving the state or taking care of the person's estate uh, until you know according to their will and according to their wishes so it has to go into probate the person does that and if the person just you know said that you know the car goes to such and such a person in the, in the uh, family you have to wait until all of that is taken care of before you can actually purchase the vehicle um, from the estate so Carrie's here from Minnesota Hall face is here from Toronto have been good today Hall face yourself my friend uh, Jonathan's here from New York City. Feel free to ask questions. And yeah, Jonathan's very good at asking questions. Gil is here from Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, <clears throat> Stable dogs. Uh, when are driving instructors going back? I need four more hours. Uh, yeah, and Stable dogs, where are you in the world that you're going to get your license? Yeah, uh, their driving instructors, I believe, are going to be one of the last of services to go back to work because of the the lockdown and whatnot and because of social distancing. Now, what's happened uh, as we've talked about here, I've been having daily live streams, which uh, I wrapped that up yesterday, uh, is that the state of Georgia in the United States of America has given licenses, driver's license to those who qualify. For example, if you've spent one year at your learner's level, uh, you sign an affidavit that you have fulfilled the requirements of 40 hours of driver training and you don't have any uh, traffic violations in the state of Georgia, then you can apply to the Georgia DOT to get your driver's license without testing. And I believe, or my professional opinion is, is that Georgia, uh, the state of Georgia is being progressive in taking care of the backlog because according to uh, CNN and other news sources that the state of Georgia has 5,000 driver's tests per week. So we've already been closed down, what, five, six weeks now? So six weeks, you're, look, you're talking about 30,000 road tests in the state of Georgia. And Georgia is the eighth most populated state in the United States of America. So that is a huge number of road tests and I believe that most of the other authorities uh, in North America are going to have to follow suit with Georgia. They're simply going to have to issue probationary licenses with students, uh, allow them to drive for six months and if they don't have any moving violations, they don't have any crashes or accidents within that period of time, then they're going to need to issue them their novice license so that they can move through the GDL our GLP program, the graduated licensing program, or the graduated driver's license program, regard you know depending on where you are in the world, uh, there's simply going to be too many people in. Uh, there's too many people lined up to get their license, right? There's just too many road tests, and it doesn't matter if they shorten the duration of the road test, which 
you know, some authorities, I believe, are going to take that on board. They're going to shorten it down to five or eight minutes, and they think that they're going to get them through that way. Uh, it's probably not going to happen, right? They're simply not going to be able to take care of the backlog. I mean, w one smart driver the other day was saying to me that uh, here in the province of British Columbia, by the time the lockdown is over and they're going back for CDL licenses, uh, you're looking at a nine month wait. Well, we're just not gonna wait nine months. That's that's silly. That's just absolutely silly. Uh, you know, there, there should be testing for those that have violations and CDL licenses, but we shouldn't be, uh, you know, pro, uh, postponing or pro prolonging. That's the word I was looking for. We shouldn't be prolonging people's access to getting a license simply because, you know, they, they, we don't have the personnel or the staff to be able to issue the road test. Innocent, uh, what about Queensland, mate? Uh, yeah, Queensland is going to be the same. Uh, innocent, I'm not familiar with the lockdown in Australia. I assume that it's the same as it is here in North America, but it's going to be the same. Uh, because of social distancing, driving instructors, driving examiners are going to be one of the last to go back to uh, back to work. So it's going to be one of uh, one option or the other option, right? It's either that they're going to simply allow drivers who qualify, who've already been in the learner's phase, done the one year, done the required number of driving, don't have any moving violations. Uh, and they're simply going to be given a driver's license and allowed to proceed through the GDL or the GLP program, right? That's one option. The other option is that uh, driving test centers in Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales, here in North America, in the United States of America, and in Canada, they're going to try and bring on enough staff and they're going to make amendments to how the tests are being carried out that they're going to try and deal with the backlog. I personally do not feel that they have enough staff on, you know, there's just simply not enough staff available who can issue driving tests that they're gonna be able to do the backlog. So the, one of two options is going to happen in order to take care of the backlog once all of this opens up. Uh, here, I believe in the next six to eight weeks, it's going to open up. So, uh, Garcia, could my Mexican CDL be accepted to get my U.S. CDL? Uh, Garcia, uh, Gil, probably not. Uh, there's pro there, there is uh, some transference from one country to another country, but you would need to talk to the specific state, the DOT in the specific state that you're going to move to, and ask them if your Mexican driver's license w would be transferable to that state as a CDL license. In most cases, it's not with CDL licenses, and in most cases, what you need to do, you either need to do a knowledge test or you need to do a driving test in order to get your uh, license valid in that state or province. Uh, Jet, is it even worth booking uh, G2 test right now? Uh, Jet, it's not worth booking G2 test right now because uh, there's, so, there's, there, there's so much backlog that they're not going to be taking your test. But uh, Jet, I would encourage you to get in contact or at least go on the MTO website, the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, who's responsible for doing the G2 test and see whether you can book the test. Because if you're gonna be looking to get a G2 test, you want to get booked in as quickly as possible so you can get into the queue so that when you do need to get your license, it's not gonna be, you know, eight, nine months down the road, it's gonna be as soon as possible. So I would do that, okay? Uh, okay, where to go? Unfortunately, here in New York, all New York schools are closed for the rest of the year. Uh, I walked past one of the schools I picked up and dropped my off my kids and missed them, and it feels empty seeing them one at school. Yes, so Jonathan's talking about public school system, the public education system. The public education system is closed in most places until the end of the year. Uh, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about public education. I'm talking about driving schools, right? Schools that teach drivers how to pass a road test because that's essentially what they do, right? This is what we're talking about. And we're talking about, you know, the authorities that are responsible for administering the driving tests and for uh, issuing driver's license. As I said before at the beginning is that the state of Georgia has issued drivers their driver's license without having to take a road test and es essentially what they've done is is that you meet the requirements you've had your learners for a year you've done the 40 hours of driving you sign an affidavit or sign a paper piece of paper saying that yes in fact you did do that 
Uh, and for those of you who don't know, an affidavit is a legal document stating that this is the truth and you signed your name to it. Uh, and then, and as well, you don't have any moving violations. So I believe that other places are going to do that as well. Uh, Brian says they're waiting in Manitoba for schools to reopen. Uh, Melissa, what about Massachusetts? Again, Melissa, one of the things about Massachusetts, it's either going to do one of two things. It's going to do what they're doing in the state of Georgia, which is giving licenses to those who qualify, or they're going to attempt to bring in enough personnel and they're going to amend the duration of the road test uh, so that they can push more people through and get more road tests completed in the course of a day. Uh, Jonathan, uh, you have no idea a diner where I go to when I go on my split work on Friday. Sometimes they're struggling. The manager was stressed. I'm praying he doesn't go. Yes, a lot of people are struggling uh, with what's going on right now in terms of COVID-19 and the continued lockdown. Yes, there are government subsidies and those types of things, but for many businesses, uh, these subsidies are just not coming fast enough and people are not seeing the money. I mean, we're, we're doing fairly well here in Canada in terms of subsidies and whatnot. But, um, you know, as Jonathan said, there are some places that are, are having difficulties. Uh, Brian, knowledge test done, waiting for school to open in Manitoba. Yes, they're waiting. Uh, what about Michigan? Same thing, uh, Princess Baker, uh, Michigan, same thing. Uh, they may follow suit with Georgia. Uh, and uh, again, you know, if you meet the qualifications, they may simply move you forward without having to have a driver's test and they'll give you your novice license. However, the other option for the MTOs are, sorry, the DOTs in different states, the Department of Transportation who issues the test there in Michigan and other places, they may simply try to bring back more personnel and to reduce the length of the road test and try and push more people through and uh, deal with the backlog. However, the problem with that is, uh, you know, there's just too many people. Michigan is, you know, one of the more populated states uh, in, it's one of the top 10 states in the United States of America. So they have huge numbers. They probably on par with Georgia or more so where they have, you know, four or 5,000 tests a week. They're already 30,000 tests behind. So there's simply, you know, in my mind, there's no way that they can catch up with that backlog. So they're probably going to have to do the same thing that they did uh, with in Georgia is, is that if you qualify, they're simply going to move you through. Uh, Innocent, I will start my apprenticeship in June, but unfortunately the employer required me a driver's license. What can you advise me? I've been uh, with my L more than a year. Okay, so you've got your learners, uh, Innocent. You need to get your driver's license. What I would say to you... Um, Innocent, do you have a mentor, somebody that can drive with you and help you to learn how to drive? Because this is the other thing. For option two, where these authorities decide that they're going to try and bring on extra personnel, where these authorities are going to uh, re, you know, shorten the length of the test, you are going to need to be super prepared. Yes, it's, it's kind of a bonus for you because you only need to hold a, a road test together for eight or ten minutes. But at one and the same time, when you go in and you show up for your driver's test, you need to have all your ducks in a row. You need to have done a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. You need to have done a pre-trip inspection uh, on the, the school vehicle if you choose to go with a school. And as well, you need to have all of your techniques and skills and abilities. All of that needs to be in place because you've got a very short time to showcase your abilities and be successful in passing your road test. So make sure that you're studying, make sure that you're getting as much driving experience as you can. Even now, uh, while you know, fuel prices are low, uh, there isn't much traffic on the roads and those types of things, make sure that you're practicing. And for those of you who are going for road tests and are practicing for driving, the three at minimum, three slow speed maneuvers that you're gonna be required to do are parallel parking, three point reverse turn, and uh, reverse stall parking, essentially backing into a parking space. At least two or th two of th those three, they're going to make those do. Uh, innocent, yes, you know how to drive, but do you know how to drive to pass a road test? Because remember, that's a different animal than just knowing how to drive. Lots of us can drive, but we can't pass a road test. So make sure that you're ready to be able to pass a road test. Uh, Jason, what about CDL license with endorsements renewals? 
Uh, so Jason, you have your learner's license for your CDL. Uh, if, you, if that's the case that you do in fact have your learners for your CDL, what's gonna happen is that you're just gonna have to wait until those tests become available. They will make CDL licenses a priority, but they're still going to be in there and there's still going to be a backlog. Uh, it's not likely that they will simply and you know move CDL drivers forward without a test. The only drivers that I see that they're going to move them forward is uh, is car drivers. It's not going to be CDL drivers. You're going to have to wait for a road test as a CDL driver. Uh, Innocent, you're most welcome. If we can help you with anything else or point you in any direction, you know, for what's going to happen on a road test and those types of things, I can certainly help you out there in Queensland. Uh, as I said, I used to drive uh, in Victoria. I had a Victorian license, uh, so I can definitely help you out. Uh, hall phase to pass a road test of any time you just need to prove to the instructor that you have due care and control of the vehicle and yes there are some procedures as well that you need to have in place hall phase you need to know how to do uh, a three-point turn you need to know how to do parallel parking and and reverse into a uh, parking space so you need to be able to do that at minimum uh, to pass a your car driver's license uh, James, uh, what is BC going to do? Could they let the schools do a prelim test when I uh, when I got uh, James? I it's th that's another option for authorities is to offload some of these road tests to the driving schools and the driving instructors. However, in the past, driving schools have had that privilege and it's been abused, and because it's been abused. Uh, they clawed it back and they gave the, it back to the authorities. Now, saying that, in Australia, some of the, the driving schools do administer their own tests. And that is another option. That is something they could do. It's probably not a viable option, but it is a possibility. Uh, so we'll, we'll simply see what happens there. Uh, D Yorker, I believe that road tests won't open back up until it's September or uh, October. Uh, D Yorker, I I can't see that as a, that's just far too long. I I don't see that happening. Uh, August or September, <coughs> you know, I and I've been wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong about this before because I said that this pandemic thing could only last a couple of weeks, and I was very wrong about that. I mean, we're into week six now, so I mean, there's a possibility it could be October you know, our September, October, but uh, I just, I don't know how the, how, how even logistically that they are even going to begin to uh, deal with the backlog. I mean, that is an incredible number of backlogs. I mean, you're, you're talking another 12 weeks, so you're talking 20 weeks. So let's just take 20 weeks as a round number. Uh, 20 times 5,000, let's, let's take the state of Georgia, which, you know, has moved people forward and realized uh, you're talking you're talking 100,000 road tests, 100,000. There's just simply no way you can catch up on that. The, the, the numbers uh, just don't work out. So they would have to implement something something else to be able to do this, okay? Uh, Gordon, most certainly in New York. New York is the mainstream of the mainstream. Okay, Eric, uh, good evening. Sorry I'm late. Better tardy than not show up. Glad you are still doing presentations. Yes, I'm still doing presentations, Eric, and helping people out. Uh, Katie, should I inform the examiner that I have hearing disability uh, to do the road test? Yes, absolutely, Katie. If you have a hearing disability, if you have any disability whatsoever, any physical limitation, uh, you know, you have hearing, you have sight in one eye, you wear glasses, uh, they're going to know that you wear glasses because that's going to be a restriction on your license. Inform the people at the counter when you go in for your road test. Tell them that you have a limitation on your road test because they need to know that. Uh, even if, if you have a learning disability, if you have dyslexia, tell them that because they're going to, uh, you know, it, it's not that they're going to make concessions, but they're going to know that, you know, if, for example, if you have dyslexia and you're trying to remember the numbers uh, to do an air brake test, then they're going to know why you're pausing so much and why, and maybe give you a little bit more time so that you can get everything out in the way that you need to get out. Because a uh, couple of years ago, I'm at the truck driving school and I was I was helping this guy, 
Uh, and we were going along and we're doing the air brake stuff and we're doing the pre-trip inspection and we're doing a drive down and we're talking to, and you know, there's a lot of numbers in truck driving, uh, you know, especially when it comes to the air brakes, you know, 80, 60, 45, 20, uh, 50, 90, 135, there's a lot of numbers. And I asked this, the student a question and all of a sudden I got all these numbers in a backwards order. And I, I, I looked at him and I said, uh, John, do you, do you have difficulty with numbers? And he, he looked at me and he said, oh, he says, I have, I have dyslexia. And I, <laughs> I sort of chuckled a little bit and I said to him, uh, did, you, did you tell anybody that you had dyslexia? And he said, no, I didn't think it was important. And I said, it's very important that, you, that I know as your instructor that you have dyslexia. I said, you know, this is going to impact how I teach if you have a learning disability. So Katie, absolutely. If you have a learning disability, make sure that you are absolutely, you're telling the examiner, you're telling the people at the test center that you have that uh, limitation and you need, you know, that they're gonna notice that. They're gonna be, you know, because you're gonna be compensating for it if you're, uh, you know, cause sound is, is very important in terms of driving. I'm not saying that you can't drive without sound, but it's people, I think people underestimate how much uh, they rely on sound for safe driving. Hall phase, I think it's going to open in June at the latest because we would run into a massive crisis if cities don't out, own up soon. Yeah, hall phase, I tend to agree with what you're saying. Uh, uh, that can be different. Yes, okay. Uh, Gil, what about trucking, truck driving private lessons? Is there a chance to hire a private lessons coach uh, like CDL now in the US? Uh, Gil, there is, I mean, you would have to contact individual driving schools for private CDL lessons. Uh, there is a possibility because, I mean, you could technically say in the truck, uh, depending what model of truck it is, that you are six feet apart, right, in the truck. I mean, potentially you could. I mean, the other thing is if you got in the truck and you're both wearing masks, I mean, you know, and you're driving with gloves, you're, you're probably going to be fine. Uh, so like, as I said, you're probably going to have to contact individual driving schools to get that information. Uh, James in the fifties, uh, took it with the local RCMP and it wasn't until I got my uh, renewal after five years that I finally got called in for a vision test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fifties would have been very different James for getting a driver's license. Uh, also I got what would be equivalent of a class one, three days after getting my class five. Yeah, and that happened all the times, James. It's it's a very different uh, licensing world that we live in now and today. Uh, Brian, going for my class three at the age of 52 in Manitoba. Hope it's the right license for me. Uh, yeah, it is definitely. Uh, Brian, have you already taken uh, some of the driver training for the class three? Uh, because if you haven't and you're considering going to driving school, I might encourage you to go for a class one as opposed to just doing a class three. And just let me know what, where you, what, at what stage you're at because I'm not going to give you the spiel uh, if you're not already uh, involved with the driving school. Uh, Innocent, sir, do you know what kind of questions they ask in pre-trip inspection in Queensland? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, for pre-trip inspection, innocent there in Queensland. Uh, just now, just remind me. Uh, you were going for were you going for a tractor trader license, like a um, a heavy rigid, or were you going for uh, an articulation unit? Which one of those were you going for? Uh, Ryan, have you had a chance to explain how to get a CDL license for new immigrants in Canada or the U.S.? Uh, I haven't, Ryan, because that's not really uh, what's what we're talking about here today. We're really talking about you know, post pandemic, post lockdown, what's going to happen after the, uh, after the lockdown is over and how authorities are going to deal with the backlog of testing and how drivers with learner's license and uh, CDL learner's license are going to move forward to get their full license and begin driving. And I, as I said, there's two, there's two possible options. Uh, one is, is that authorities are going to bring on uh, more personnel, they're going to shorten the duration of the road tests, and they're going to try and do more road tests per day. Okay, that's the one way they're going to do it. The other way that they're going to do it is the way that Georgia is currently doing it, and they're simply taking uh, learner's license for car drivers. Uh, those that qualify have spent the year or 180 days or however long that you are required to be at the learner's phase. Uh, you finish the learner stage, you don't have any moving violations, you sign an affidavit that you've done 40 hours of driving, 
and uh, then you're just simply going to move into the next phase without a driver's test. And I think that for a lot of authorities, this is what they're going to have to do. And I'll tell you why they're reluctant to do that. <laughs> All right, uh, Gordon, why couldn't the road test be done with the instructor in the back seat uh, with a bodysuit? Sounds silly, but dealing with all the backing, all that backing is madness. All, all that backlog is madness. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Gordon. <laughs> there's there's a huge backlog for sure. Uh, Nori is ICBC closed during COVID? Yes, they are definitely closed. Uh, however, Nori, they are doing. Uh, learners tests at ICBC, the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, which is the testing center here in the province. They are doing knowledge tests by appointment. So again, get in touch with your testing center, whether it's the DOT, the Ministry of Transportation, whether it's the SAAQ in Quebec, you know, uh, all of the states is going to be the Department of Transport, whichever testing authority it is, go on their website, have a look at the information and see what they're doing. Okay, uh, Brian, you're waiting to attend school. Okay, so Brian, if you can, if you think that you have any inclination of driving a tractor trailer, if you have the money to go for the extra time that you need to do, I don't know, uh, Brian, whether they have the melt in Manitoba yet, the mandatory entry level training program there. Uh, if they don't, then I would definitely encourage you to go for a class one license if you can. 80% of the information that you're going to learn for your class three is all applicable to uh, tractor trailer, okay? So it's only about 20% more work to actually get your tractor trailer license. And the thing with getting your tractor trailer license, the reason that I'm encouraging you to get a tractor trailer license is because you're more employable uh, as a tractor trailer license. It's difficult to get a, a, a job with a class three license, with just a straight truck license. It's tough, it's really tough. Uh, there are some jobs, they're not very well paying. Uh, and you know, even if you go to work for an excavating company, for example, so say they've got a bunch of dump trucks, if there's a dump truck sitting there and they have pups on them, now it's a class one vehicle. As soon as you put a trailer on the back of a dump truck, it's a class one vehicle, right? And excavating companies have the luxury they're not going to hire any class three drivers. They're simply going to dr hire all class one drivers. And the reason for that is say that John gets sick and he calls in sick and he's a class one driver. Now what happens is the dispatcher or the person responsible for getting another driver in has to go down the list and it's like, oh, well, Peter and Rob and John and Susie don't have a class one license, so I can't call them and they got to sort it all out. Whereas if they just hire all class one licenses for all of their trucks, they just start at the top of the list and they just kind of start calling down until they get the driver to come in and you you know fill in for the driver that's sick that day. So I'm I would encourage you to get your uh, to get your class one license if you can pull it off. Okay, uh, Katie, you're most welcome. Uh, vegan. My permit expired on April 30th without taking my road test. I'm in California. Will I have to do a written test again or my permit will be extended? It's really a tough situation right now. Uh, Williams, your permit will be extended and you need to get in touch with the DOT there in California and figure out what the steps are to get your license extended. Uh, and once you get your license extended, they should have a waiting, a queue like a waiting list for you to be able to sign up to get ready to do your road test. And as I was saying earlier, William, uh, vegan there, you're gonna have to be more prepared to nail your road test because if, if California doesn't follow the state of Georgia in terms of just giving people their license without uh, a road test, you're gonna have to be spot on on the day of your road test because you've only got about eight or 10 minutes to showcase your skills. So make sure that you can know how to parallel park, know, make sure that you can three point turn, uh, make sure that uh, you know how to back into a parking space. You need to at least do those three uh, maneuvers. And as well in the state of California, you're also going to have to back up along a curb. Now they may keep that or they may jettison that for the purposes of shortening the road test, the duration of the road test, because this is one of the ways that they can take care of the backlog, uh, you know, with all the tests, especially there in California, because California is the most populated state in all of the US. So they, they have a huge, huge backlog. 
All right. Uh, D. Yorker, uh, how long is the CDL and motorcycle road test and what are the skills you need to pass them? I'm just curious. Uh, CDL is quite involved. Uh, D. Yorker, now where are you in the world, D. Yorker? And I can just let me know where you are and I can speak more, give you more specific details depending on where you are in the world. Uh, Kerry, I would recommend Rick's defensive online driving course to put in place uh, skills to reduce the risk of getting involved in a crash uh, for anyone getting a driver's license without taking a road test. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much for that endorsement, Kerry. As well, uh, if you go over to the Smart Drive Test website, and uh, if you buy, purchase the course, pass your road test first time, also included in that is uh, Winter Driving Smart and the Defensive Driving Smart course. So you can pick that all up for about $38. And uh, even if you're in a state in the US that doesn't get winter, all of the skills and techniques in the winter driving course will work for any type of inclement weather, okay? Whether you're driving in fog or rain or sleet or ice, Anything like that, the winter driving course will help you to drive in all of those uh, states. All right. Okay, D. Yorker, you're in uh, Georgia. Okay, so you need a CDL license. Uh, D. Yorker, you're going to have to go to truck driving school to be able to get some seat time in a rig. Uh, the course, you know, it can take anywhere from kind of four to eight weeks, depending on how long the course is at the truck driving school. Uh, all CDL licenses have five major components turning. So driving the rig around uh, a city and being able to get around tight corners and those types of things, that's the most important thing. Uh, next one is learning how to shift the non-synchronous transmission. Uh, and then third thing is pre-trip inspection. So those are your big three. The next two components of a CDL license are backing up. So you're gonna have to know how to back up a trailer if you don't already know how to do that. And if you, even if you do already know how to do, back up a trailer, those skills are transferable to a tractor trailer but you need a bit more space, obviously. And then finally, uh, coupling, hooking and unhooking the semi-trailer safely is the last thing that you need to do for the purposes of passing a road test. Uh, and then motorcycle license, uh, you know, I would counsel anybody who's going for a motorcycle license to take a course, okay? I just wouldn't, I, I would counsel against, I would recommend against just getting on a motorcycle, learning how to drive it and going down and taking a road test. Okay, you are a vulnerable road user on a motorcycle and you need all the skills, all the knowledge and all the abilities that you can get your hands on to keep yourself safe. Remember, when you get a motorcycle license and you are riding a motorcycle, you are 35 times more likely to die in a car crash than if you're driving a car. So know that for the purposes of a motorcycle license and I strongly encourage you, strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to take a course because you can learn lots of information and defensive driving skills that will keep you safe. I mean, obviously we talk about all of that here on the channel and in the defensive driving course over at the website, but it's just, if you can work with a mentor uh, when you're learning how to drive a motorcycle, uh, it's gonna keep you safe on the roadways and make sure that you come home to your family at the end of the, at the end of your ride, okay? Uh, Lazaro, uh, I think I'm ready to take the written test, uh, A, B, and combination. Do you think I'll be better off trying to find a job with the permit, or do you recommend to go to trucking school? Uh, Lazaro, I would definitely recommend that you go to trucking school. Uh, even if you're not going to take a course at the trucking school, I would recommend that you take three or four lessons. Remember, keep in mind, and this is for any class of license. This isn't just for trucks, buses, cars, motorcycles. Remember, there is a difference, a huge difference between passing a road test and knowing how to drive safely, how to drive smarter. And uh, it was interesting, uh, last week I had a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching session with uh, Evan Carmichael. He's a business coach, you know, uh, motivational speaker, has a huge YouTube channel, a couple million subscribers. And uh, we were talking about my channel and talking about how to move the channel forward and those types of things. And uh, here, I think you're gonna see in the next maybe year or two, you're gonna see me splitting the channel into two channels because I have two different audiences. I have one audience that comes to Smart Drive Test to learn how to pass a road test and they're here for six or eight weeks and then they leave. And then I have all of this other information about driving safely, driving smarter, and that's a different that's a different YouTube channel. That's different information because people who are looking to pass the road test, uh, they pass their driver's test. 
they're not really interested in that information. So uh, I think I'm I'm really moving towards splitting splitting the channel, and there'll be two uh, two YouTube channels. Uh, one for just this is how to pass your road test and then to be another one for how to drive smarter how to drive safer okay so going back to the point about you know whatever your license you're going for motorcycle car truck bus take some driving lessons from a driving instructor because that's what they do every day they teach people how to pass a road test and as the, the last thing about all of this is to keep in mind, there is a reciprocal relationship between driving examiners who work at the DOT, who work at the MTO, who work at all of the driving test centers and the driving exam and the driving instructors, right? When I was a driving instructor at the school, I was at the test center three or four times a week in some cases. The driving examiners are learning from the instructors, they're learning from the students. So in a lot of ways, the instructors are kind of shaping how examiners are testing the students, okay? Because they know that the examiners know how to drive the vehicle. They know that the examiners, or the instructors rather, have the best uh, driving practices in place. So the examiners are looking for those skills that the instructor is going to give you uh, when you go to a driving school. So I very, very much encourage you to go to a driving school, even if it's only one or two lessons, then the driving instructor is gonna give you the specific skills that you need to have to pass the road test. As well, the driving instructor is going to take you on the test route. That's the most important. And every test center has specific routes and there are specific things that you need to do at those corners. For example, when I was teaching in Victoria, uh, we had one left-hand turn and it was a crazy left-hand turn to get a tractor trailer unit around. Not only was it a crazy corner to get a tractor trailer around, because you know most of the time left-hand turns aren't that difficult in a tractor trailer, but this one was on kind of a weird angle. It wasn't, it wasn't a 90 degree corner, it was offset, so it was less than 90 degrees. Less than 90 degrees or more than 90 degrees? Less than 90 degrees. And because it was less than 90 degrees, it was really tough to get around. And then once the student got the truck around the corner, 200 feet up the road, there was a school zone. <laughs> so you had to know there was a school zone and you had to slow the, the vehicle down appropriately uh, before you got into the school zone. Unfortunately, I had one student that, that failed on that school zone because keep in mind, if you speed in a school zone when school is in session, it's an automatic fail on a road test. All right. Uh, Gordon, uh, Rick, you have been through a similar experience as a driving instructor uh, with this COVID lockdown experiencing drive test centers deal with immense backlog. Uh, Gordon, it's it's not something that I've ever dealt with before. The test centers have just never been closed before. I mean, we have dealt with backlogs before. We have dealt with, uh, you know, uh, you know, long waits for road tests and those types of things. And I mean, this was certainly something that they were dealing with. Uh, in Toronto and other major cities in North America in the spring was is that they were simply waiting you know these huge backlogs to get people in and get people through the test centers uh, you know that's just part and parcel that waiting four to six months to get a road test is the bottleneck but now they're you know authorities are going to be forced to do something they're, they simply cannot deal with the backlog and they certainly can't expect people to be waiting a year or two years before they can get a road test so they can get on and get their license. I mean, they need to realize that some of these people who are going through for a CDL license, for example, uh, you know, not, not, not just their CDL license, but people who are going through for a car license and people who are going through for a CDL license, many people who are getting these licenses are need them to be able to go to work. So know that, that you know, they, they have to have these in order for people to go to work. So that's, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, Hallface, how long would you tell a student to practice in a parking lot before going into live traffic? Uh, Hallface, I would I would suggest uh, for me with new students, I would suggest that you spend a solid, you know, three two hour lessons in the parking lot. Okay, and that's probably a little bit on the extreme side of how much you need. Maybe just two two hour lessons because you know it's not it's not sexy. It's not sexy at all. It's, it's actually a little bit boring. So, you know, I might suggest uh, four hours depending on the student. Uh, so, 
you know, and maybe just even, you know, three one hour sessions you know it really depends on the student and how well the student is getting it and those types of things i mean if you know you have a student who gets in the car and you go down there and you're working with the pylons and they're you know they're doing really well after a couple of hours then just leave it at a couple hours if some students might need it a little bit longer uh the other thing that i do recommend with a lot of students is in the parking lot and working with the pylons and whatnot is uh you know do that at the beginning when they first get started and then after you've been driving on the road for a bit you know say you've got four or six hours on the road and you're driving around and those types of things then go back to the parking lot and revisit those fundamentals uh, after having a bit of driving in and around town and whatnot because that's really going to help the student out to just revisit some of that because uh, at the beginning they're not really getting the whole thing because they don't really have the big picture of driving but after that and then they come back and they're like oh okay now I get it all right, uh, Smooth Gang, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. When will the DMV start giving license plates out again to dealerships or to register a car uh, when the county open back up? Yeah, Smooth Gang, it's definitely going to be those types of things in terms of uh, car dealerships and whatnot. Uh, all of that is going to... Um, okay, let me back up. Some of that, what you're looking for, Smooth Gang, is going to be available online. So you will be able to go online and, and enter the information yourself. Uh, you won't necessarily have to go into the uh, office. You can get it done online, and then they will simply send you that information out in, uh, in the mail. So what I would suggest to you there in Pittsburgh is simply go on to the DOC, DOT site in, in Pittsburgh there and have a look and see if they're offering that online because I would suspect that that's what they're doing. Uh, RAF, is DMV New York open for license? No, not at this juncture. Uh, we're simply talking about the options that authorities have in terms of how to deal with the backlog of driving tests. And they have essentially two options. One is to shorten the duration of the test, bring on more personnel, or do what Georgia is doing. And if students qualify, and we're talking about passenger vehicles, we're not talking about motorcycles or trucks and buses, we're talking about passenger vehicles, what they're doing is if students qualify, they've been at the they've had their learners for a year, they've done their 40 hours of driving and they don't have any violations, then they can simply get their provisionary provisional license and move into the novice phase of the GDL, the graduated driver's license. Okay, uh, Eric, would it be possible for the DMV to license driving instructors to conduct con conduct road tests and deal with the backlog? Uh, Eric, yeah, we've talked about that and they potentially could. That is another option. The issue with that is, is in the past, uh, they've done that where driving schools have been allowed to administer road tests. The problem with that is they've abused the system and it's essentially, you know, it's, it's open to what, what has happened is it's been open to fraud and, uh, you know, they started selling licenses to students who came in and paid them $500 or whatnot. And uh, many of these students who went out in the world with a driver's license didn't have any driving experience at all. Uh, Ryan, taking class one road test. Okay, not understanding that. Uh, oh, sorry, I missed the beginning. Uh, Saskatchewan will begin opening up tomorrow, but the government still recommends physical distancing washing hands but when i go to downtown i pass by the driving test center i see some people there okay so yes uh ryan this the province of saskatchewan here in canada has been one of the progressive provinces and they are ones uh that are opening up and beginning to uh do cdl road tests uh i believe that other provinces and states are going to follow suit uh, because as I said, the backlog is beginning to become enormous and authorities are going to have to do something in order to be able to deal with this backlog so that when they do get back to business, uh, students who are waiting for road tests are not waiting a year or 18 months, which is just a crazy amount of time to wait for a road test. So I'm thinking that they're going to have to start pushing this through. Uh, Gordon, have you heard of uh, the analytic philosophy school known as the Pittsburgh School? Just a nice uh, tidbit to know. Okay, that's a different conversation. Espinoza, uh, can I take the written test, uh, permit test during the pandemic? Uh, Espinoza, one of the things you can do is uh, wherever you live, whichever state you live in in the U.S. there, go online, look on the DOT website because I know that uh, here in the province of British Columbia where I live, the uh, testing authority uh, is 
booking appointments for people to do their learner's tests. So your state or province, depending on where you live, may be taking appointments for people to do their learner's test. So that is possibly one option that you could do is book an appointment and then you could in fact go out in and do your learner's test. The reason that they're now booking appointments for learner's test is to, due to social distancing and that sort of thing. So that they can control the number of people who are in the office and they can adhere to the rules of social distancing. And I think this is gonna happen for learner's permits now for quite some time. Because previously, you used to be able to go into the test center and you could just go in and walk in and do your learner's test at any time, right? You didn't have to book an appointment, but now you're gonna to have to go in and book an appointment. Uh, Brian, you're most welcome. Always happy to be able to help out. If you have any more questions, uh, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com and we'll be more than happy to get you going there and see what we can do for you to get you, get you a license and get you a job. Uh, Epic, speaking of Georgia, their program of qualified permit drivers who meet the criteria of a road test now get a provisional license without a road test. I guess that's what states uh, might do post COVID. Yes, absolutely Epic, that's one of the options and I think that is probably, uh, you know, it's a lot, of the, a lot of the states and a lot of the provinces are going to have to do that. If people meet the requirements of one year at the learner's phase, They've done their 40 uh, hours of driving. They signed the affidavit, you know, the legal document saying that in fact that they did that, it's true, and they don't have any moving violations, then, you know, the best option, the best avenue for these test centers is to simply give them a license. Now, there is a downfall on that, and I wa just want to speak to this brief briefly. Governments and driving license and auth licensing authorities have invested huge, huge amounts of money uh, in the GLP program, the GDL program, the Graduated Driver's Licensing Program. If they do this and they start giving people driver's license and they start to realize that people are not having the crashes that they think they're going to have, then it's going to undermine this GDL program. It's going to underline, undermine this and it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, this program isn't working because we as professional uh, safety authorities, we're convinced that the GDL and GLP program is not working. and But governments have so much time, energy, and resources invested in this GDL and GLP program that they would never claw it back. They could never go to the public and say, oh, listen, we're going to remove the GDL program uh, and put your young people at risk. They, they just simply can't do that. But uh, you know, this may expose the fact that the GLP program and the GDL program isn't working because there's all kinds of studies out there to say you know, young people are having fewer crashes, having less crashes. Yes, they are. But at one and the same time, young people are also postponing when they're getting their license. So they're not getting their license anymore at 17 or 18 or 19 years old. Many of these young people are not getting a full license until they're 20, 25 years old, in some cases, some extreme cases, until they're 30 years old. So of course the crashes and deaths among young people has been reduced because they've simply postponed when these young people are getting a license because many people, many young people now live in cities and they have access to really good public transportation. So there's no reason for them to get a license. So this is this is the other piece about all of this and that's a bit of an aside. Okay, uh, while merging onto a highway from an acceleration lane, how do you merge safely without compromising timing? Okay, great question. Uh, when you're on the acceleration lane and you're getting going, you need to pick your hole, okay? You need to pick your spot where you're going to merge in and you need to aim for that. So you need to get the vehicle up to speed, keep your eye on that space, and then move into that space. Remember, when you're merging onto a highway, freeway, or a motorway, the onus of responsibility is on the merging driver. However, other people on the freeway, the highway, if you can slow down a little bit, and I don't mean like braking, I mean just taking your foot off the throttle and allowing the other person to merge over, or if you can change lanes and move over to the left lane, that's going to help out the merging driver as well. Remember, driving is a social activity. And if we can help other people out during the day because we can just simply take our foot off the throttle, that's going to help other people out and it's not going to take any time out of your day. So try and help other people out when you can. Okay, uh, Smiles, with the provisional license, would they still have to take a road test at some point at a later date? Uh, Smiles, yes, at a later date they will because they're moving them into the novice phase 
of the GDL program. So to exit the GDL program and get a full license, you're gonna have to take a road test. So at some point they are going to take a road test. They're simply not taking a road test from the learner's phase into the novice phase. That's the road test that they're, uh, that they're allowing, uh, you know, them to move past. That's, that's the only one that they're doing, okay? Uh, Thomas, what website do I go on to change my address at the DMV? Okay, so Thomas, whichever state you're in, so say for example that you're in the state of Michigan, you just type in Michigan Department of Transportation, uh, change address in Google, and that should take you to directly to the website and directly to the form that you need to have to change the address uh, there at in where, excuse me, wherever you live. Uh, Michael, regardless of COVID-19, we construction workers are working. Slow down in those work zones. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Slow down in work zones. Okay. None of us are in that much of a hurry that we got to, you know, ram flaggers, drive around flaggers, be arrogant, be aggressive in, in, in construction zones. Remember, these people, these construction workers are making our roadways better so that in the future, the, the ride's better, it's going to be quicker, it's going to be faster, and all of those things. So do what you can to keep our, you know, workers safe. Uh, Epic New Jersey version, if they adapt the example of Georgia, it's going to be six months with a permit provided you are in the 16 to 21 age range without a mo any moving violations, but it's three months uh, if above 21. Okay, excellent. Uh, Richie, hi Rick, I live in Ontario. My DZ license needed renewing. I dropped uh, it to a G. I can't find any information if I can just go and write a D and then book the practical. Uh, any thoughts? Uh Richie, how long was it previous that you went from a D to a G? Uh, because the reason I ask you that is uh, if it's less than five years, oftentimes what you can do is you can simply go back in uh, and you would need to check this the specifics of this, but I believe that you can simply go back in, present your medical, and you can get your DZ back, okay, if it's within five years. If it's after five years, unfortunately, you have to start all over again. That's how it works. Uh, yes, there you go. Epic. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Gordon, remember when a truck refused to yield to me when I was on the slip road? I had to slow down substantially. Before I slowed down, I checked my mirrors and used the hand signals. Okay. William, I passed my driver's written test. Now I only need to pass the driving test. Okay. And where uh, did you do your written test, uh, William? Can someone respond to my comment, please? Yeah, we already got that. Okay, uh, Richie, it's been about one and a half years since I dropped it to a G. Okay, so Richie, contact the MTO and ask him about those specifics. But I'm almost positive that because it's been less than five years, if you simply go back in and give them your medical, you might only have to take the knowledge test. I don't think you're going to have to start all over again because that's what happened uh, for me here in British Columbia when I came here. When I first came here, I let my class one license go, my AZ license go, and I went back in and because it had been less than five years, I was able to simply present my medical and I got my, my AZ back here. All right. Uh, California. Okay. So William, it's still, there's still no decision about what the state of California is doing in terms of driver's license test. I suspect that they're going to wait and see how it's going in Georgia. And then they're probably going to do the same thing that Georgia is doing because uh, California is a more populated state than Georgia. And they have way more tests and way more backlog there in that state. Uh, D Yorker, when you get your license, you don't have to take the road test at a later date. Uh, how do you mean that you don't have to take a road test at the later date? How do you get your full license then D Yorker? because you're part of the GDL program and there's two road tests in most GDL programs. I haven't heard of one that doesn't have uh, two road tests. Espinoza, I need to take the written permit test in California. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to go on the California Department of Transport website and see if you can book an appointment. I don't know whether they're doing that or not. Uh, just go and have a look. Uh, William, I passed the driving test, but not driving. Okay, do you, William, do you have a mentor to help you to learn how to drive? Because I would suggest that you get yourself driving as quickly as possible and get yourself going so that you're ready for the road test when all of this unlocks and we begin to move forward. Uh, Carrie, if you could 
uh, revise the GLP program, how would you revise it to keep new drivers safe and encourage drivers to get their driver's license at the same time? Excellent question, Carrie. <laughs> uh, let me give that some thought and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that, about revisions. Because as I say to people, and that's an excellent question because I say to people, it's, you know, it's easy to criticize a, 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 a GLP program. Uh, but, um, you know, how would we revise it? How would we revise it so everybody feels safe and everybody, we can move forward and maintain a level of safety? Then, uh, you know, I'll give that some thought. Uh, it said that on the DMV website. Okay, D Yorker. I, I'll, I'll look that up and just verify that information because I find that hard to believe that they're not going to have an exit test for these people to get their full license. Because essentially what you're saying is, is that they've waived both the tests. They've, they've waived the novice test and they've waived the exit test to get a full license. So there's no testing at all of these people. They're simply gonna move them to get a full license. Uh, that'll be interesting. So I'll definitely have a look at that. Uh, Richie, thank you so much, Rick. I'll book an appointment and get a medical as soon as possible. Awesome, that's really great. And I hope that all works out for you. Uh, excellent. Okay, so we're nearing the end here. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Did that, that hour go really quick? Uh, popular topic here. So uh, again, if anybody has any questions about any of this, how to get a license, how to get a road test, how to pass a road test, uh, talk to me today or talk to me, send me an email, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to help you out, get back to you and do the best that I can to get you a license and get you going. Uh, punch shot. Today, two motorcycles passed me going over hundred miles an hour. It scared me. <laughs> But you're okay. You everything uh, everything is good. Okay, uh, excellent. And uh, but you're good. Yep. <laughs> so I'll just on that note of the motorcycles passing at 100 miles an hour. I'll leave you with a story. Uh, three years ago, I was driving back and forth to the island a lot. I had some bad tenants in my house there, and uh, so I come down into Merritt. You come down a hill and you get off the exit and you get off on the connector to go to Kelowna. And two uh, Lamborghinis go past me. And uh, they make the turn off and there's a rest area there. And the two Lamborghinis went into the rest area. And of course, you know, I'm driving the buggy. As most of you know, I have a 1998 Honda CRB. So I go up the hill because as soon as you get off and you get on the connector between Merritt and Kelowna, you go up the hill and go across the flat and down the hill and into Kelowna. So I climb up over the hill and I'm, you know, running along there about 110, 120. And the two Lamborghinis come up behind me and they're running along there at 160 kilometers an hour. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking in my head, you know, cause it's a long, it's a, it's a whole day drive uh, from where I live in Vernon to get out to Vancouver Island by the time you include the ferry. And uh, they're running along there at 160 kilometers an hour. And I'm thinking to myself, there is no way that any cop is going to pull me over. They're going to pull the Lamborghinis over. And uh, so I'm in behind the Lamborghinis and we're going across on the connector there. <laughs> at a very high rate of speed. And I look in the mirror and I see this car coming. And I can and it's and it's coming and it's it's gaining on us. And you know, about 2 minutes later, this Nissan comes past us and he must have had it to the boards for at least 15 or 20 minutes because he went past us at about 185, 190 kilometers an hour and went zipping past the two Lamborghinis and off he went and uh, just kept on going and I thought uh, you know, if it had been me driving the Lamborghini, I would have just hammered on it and went whizzing past this guy. So there's a, there's a funny story for you. Uh, Nathan, I worked in the oil fields and drove older 18 speeds for a year. What would be the best job to go after? I am in an oil town. Uh, uh, Nathan, I mean, if you worked in the oil fields for a year driving trucks with 18 speeds, I mean, you could, you could get any job you want. You've got all the experience you need. Uh, yeah, um, railroads, we are looking for boom truck drivers. There you go. Richie's got an excellent uh, suggestion there for you. Uh, I have a 12 ton ticket. I think I need a bigger one though. Excellent. Kimberly, I'm taking uh, my road test. I am not taking my road test for a while. I haven't got my permit yet either, but I hope to get it soon. Any tips on how to pass the permit test? Uh, yes, Kimberly, there's a video here. Corey will put that up for you on how to pass the knowledge test. Actually, I've recently put up two or three uh, videos on how to uh, 
how to study for and how to pass the knowledge test. And as well, there's some practice driving test questions over at the Smart Drive Test website. And if you take the course, pass your road test first time, there's also practice driving test questions in there that will guarantee that you pass the knowledge test. And again, for anybody who might be considering take pass your road test first time, we also include the defensive driving course and the winter driving smart courses. Uh, both of those are included for about 38 bucks over at the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, Richie, if you find the right company and tell them you drive, they will pay for your training except the DZ usually. Uh, Carrie, thank you for all your information uh, you provide in answering all our questions. You are most welcome, Carrie, and thank you for being part of the Smart Drive Test community. Uh, last thing uh, I forgot to mention, <laughs> I got busy here answering all the questions. We hit 20 million views today on the Smart Drive Test website. 20 million. How's that for a crazy number, eh? 20 million views on the Smart Drive Test website. So congratulations, our channel, our YouTube channel, you, all of you, every one of you has made this possible. So thank you so much. Uh, Richie's interesting enough, perhaps you don't know this, Rick, but on the railroad, uh, the minute you put your truck onto the railroad, you are no longer putting drive time on the book. Sounds weird, I know. Uh, yeah, Richie, that doesn't surprise me at all. There's all kinds of uh, logbook rules uh, like that, uh, you know, that you can loopholes, so to speak. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks so much, Hall Phase. Thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great night. If you have any questions, drop me a note, leave me a comment, and we'll definitely help you out. And uh, stay safe. And remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.